We're learning more tonight about the two men police say were killed when a 13 year old girl took a car for a joy ride. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee in for Barbara Lee Edwards. The two men were sleeping in some bushes when they were hit. News 8 Steve Price shows us how they are being remembered. The memorial to Sofio Torres and Mateo Salvador continues to grow out here with flowers and candles. Friends want to make sure they're not remembered as two homeless men who were killed, but instead as two people who cared. Gaiola. His friends called him Gallo because he was strong and brave, but Sofia Torres also had a big heart. He was that one guy that would give his 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 sweater, his whatever blanket to to his to his friends, to his like to people in need, you know, like he was he was an he was an awesome man, man. Octavio Yanez says he knew Torres for more than a decade, and what struck him is that Torres had family in the area that he could have stayed with, but he didn't want to abandon his less fortunate friends. He chose to be here that night, you know. He instead of going, he could have he had a he had a house, he had a bed, he had people he could have gone to. But he chose to be here, you know, chose to like be with people who didn't have anybody. It happened Friday night in Escondido. Torres and Salvador sleeping behind a bush near Mission and Ash. Police say a 13 year old driving an SUV was trying to escape from officers when she lost control, jumped the curb and slammed into the two men. Both died from their injuries. <laughs> The impact was caught on a neighbor's security camera. It, it broke my heart. It made me cry. It, it just, he didn't deserve that. Octavio is furious that the 13-year-old driver and her underage passenger were immediately released to their parents and cannot be charged as adults. They took two lives of two innocent men. You know, whether or not they were homeless, they deserve justice. Torres owned a landscaping business in the North County, but a few years ago it ran into financial trouble and he had to shut it down. He still worked day jobs in landscaping, making enough money to buy food for himself and his friends. This picture was provided to News 8 by Torres' son, who lives in Texas. He was too distraught for an interview, but is glad his father's story is being told. In Escondido, Steve Price, News 8. We have breaking news, a crash in Chula Vista. We're told at least one person is trapped. This is at East Palomar Street and Santa Olivia Road. This right here, a look from Chopper 8. We do not know how many people were involved in this crash or how badly anyone was hurt. We will bring you any new information as it becomes available. But for now, avoid this intersection, East Palomar Street and Santa Olivia Road in Chula Vista. <laughs> County leaders expect another delay in local COVID-19 vaccinations. Chair Nathan Fletcher announced today that several shipments of the vaccine that are heading to San Diego are being delayed due to winter storms across the U.S. Vaccination stations may have to pause as soon as tomorrow and appointments rescheduled. Meanwhile, our case count continues to head in the right direction. 539 new cases were reported today. That's out of more than 13,000 tests for a 4% positive rate. 57 more deaths were also reported. That delay mentioned by Supervisor Fletcher shut down the county's vaccination superstation near Petco Park for three days. It was back open today after a late shipment arrived yesterday, but as the supervisor mentioned, winter weather across the country is expected to cause further delay. Despite that, San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria says the city of San Diego is opening up more sites and focusing on vaccinating underserved communities. What we've identified is areas of need in some of our Southeast and South Bay communities. So we'll be at the Malcolm X Branch Library tomorrow trying to assist uh, San Diegans in our Southeast communities to get vaccinated. Also looking at potential sites in South uh, Bay, the San Ysidro community, uh, perhaps as early as next week. Mayor Gloria also reiterated his call to vaccinate teachers before reopening schools. Governor Gavin Newsom gave an update on statewide vaccination efforts, saying it is likely everyone who wants a vaccine will be able to get one by early summer. That's extraordinarily encouraging. But June, July is not March and April. And so over the course of the next number of weeks, we're going to have to be honest with folks about what we can and what we can't do. 
Meanwhile, Newsom and state lawmakers today announced an agreement on a $9.6 billion COVID relief package. It includes a one-time $600 payment to nearly 6 million low-income Californians. There's also $2 billion in grants available for small businesses. More than a dozen scientists sent a letter to the Biden administration this week urging the White House and CDC to take immediate action to help stop the spread of COVID-19 in the air. The doctors gathered on a joint Zoom briefing today saying more needs to be done to update filtration in the workplace and produce more PPE. News 8's Heather Hope spoke with the local scientist behind the letter about her call to action. The team of medical experts on the call today say their message has been the same since the beginning of the pandemic, that COVID-19 can be transmitted in the air. But they say the CDC did not push that transmission advice seriously, partly because ventilation upgrades can be expensive and there aren't enough N95 masks to go around. By not having the CDC recognize the importance of aerosol transmission, it will set back OSHA and set back employers from doing the right thing. Scientists are calling on the White House, CDC, and Dr. Anthony Fauci to update COVID-19 policies by acknowledging the virus can be widely transmitted in the air. And currently, so many CDC guidelines are out of date. They're left over from the Trump administration. 13 medical experts signed a letter sent to the Biden administration on Monday and gathered on a Zoom call to offer employee solutions, saying the workplace is the primary place for COVID exposure, even saying plastic dividers aren't enough. The scientists want OSHA to better their emergency standards and for the federal government to ramp up production of PPE and respirators by using the Defense Production Act. The purpose of this letter was not to discuss masks. It was not to discuss what's a better mask or what's a... It really was to call the attention to the fact that workers are not being offered the kind of protection they need. UC San Diego's Dr. Kimberly Prather did an ocean simulation inside a laboratory by putting seawater inside a tank and breaking waves to see what comes out of the ocean. In other words, we look at, you know, if it gets into the air, everyone in San Diego can breathe it. Better your ventilation at home. Crack open a window or door as the virus can float indoors. Large droplets can travel six feet, but smaller ones, particles called aerosols, can float invisibly through a room when someone talks, and those particles can be infectious for hours. They float. They don't fall to the ground in six feet. They float like cigarette smoke, and they accumulate indoors. And so if you happen to be inside with someone who's sick and they don't know it, they're generating thousands of aerosols a minute. As for getting kids safely back in school. There's a simple little sensor. This is a CO2 sensor. It actually tells you whether your air is fresh or not. Because inside, we all share the same air. And that's how this virus is spreading. And those 13 scientists hope to get a response from Dr. Fauci, the White House, or CDC from their letter soon. Heather Hope, News 8. All right, Heather, thanks. Former San Diego mayor and Republican candidate for governor Kevin Faulkner is calling on the state to reopen all public schools. Faulkner held a media conference in San Francisco this morning where he continued his rally against California Governor Gavin Newsom, whom he calls the promise breaker in chief. I'm Kevin Gavin Newsom promised compassion, equality and leadership. But Mr. Governor, letting people live on the streets isn't compassion. Allowing your winery to stay open while businesses were forced to close is an equality. And selling out the future of millions of public school students isn't leadership. Governor Newsom has said he is remaining focused on managing the state's pandemic response. He has also pointed to Faulkner's past support of former President Trump. A new lawsuit from a local parent and coach aims to push the state to let kids start playing sports again. Scripps Ranch football coach Marlon Gardinera is suing the state on behalf of his son and another athlete from the San Marcos area. Uh, the chances of transmission in sports are less than that in their communities, but in our safe, structured, supervised environment where we take precautions and we're keeping an eye on them, uh, they're actually safer. Gardinera was in court today trying to secure a restraining order to allow kids to start playing right away. He says today's hearing was pushed back until Friday afternoon to allow the state more time to respond to the lawsuit. More than two pounds of meth was found attached to a drone that crashed at Los America's premium, premium outlets in San Ysidro this week. An employee at the outlets found the drone on a roof of a business Monday. Border Patrol believes smugglers in Mexico likely used the drone to get drugs across to the U.S. Agents say utilizing drones to move drugs into the U.S. has become more common. 
Local agents have investigated seven drone smuggling incidents since October. A tip jar thief almost made a getaway before he got clumsy. Take a look. This happened over the weekend at the El Pollo Grill in Otay Ranch. An employee there says a man tried to take the tip jar and got as far as the doorway before he, oops, dropped the jar and all of the money. Workers listened. They saw what happened. They ran after him outside, tackled him. No word yet, though, if there was any arrest. Oops.